Welcome back to the Casos YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about file size and compression to get your file sizes down to submit to places like Apple Podcast. Um, Apple Podcast being one of the gold standards for submitting your podcast to a distribution point on the web, they have hard caps and soft caps, minimums and maximums. So let's just talk about image size first. Apple wants you to have at minimum 1400 by 1400 pixel cover art for your podcast and a maximum of 3000 by 3000 pixels for your cover art. Now the challenge here is that when you go 3000 by 3000, your file size, depending on how you're designing it, what's in it, what kind of content is in this image, um, the more complex it is, the, the bigger the, the file size generally. Um, when you make 3000 by 3000 images or if you don't know, you maybe just take a photo, a photo with your phone or your camera, or you pull some stock photography off the internet and you don't compress it and it's huge and you just shrink it down to 3000 by 3000, the file size is still pretty hefty. So what we wanna look at today is, here's my cover art for a podcast that I produce. If you've seen the last episode that I did on using a podcast validator tool, you saw that, um, the validator tools threw me a warning and said, hey, your file size is too big. iTunes or Apple Podcasts only wants a maximum of 512 kilobytes for a file size. My image is one megabyte, which you can see right here. So roughly they want to shrink it down in half. Now, my podcast is fine. It's, it's in iTunes. It's distributed everywhere. Um, and there's no issue. So it is just a warning but someday Apple might turn and say, no, it, it has to be 512 or you're out of the directory. So of course I'm gonna rectify that and walk you through how I do it. So here it is, one megabyte, it's 3000 by 3000 pixels. Now you can do this with, I'm gonna close it. You can use any photo app. You could use Mac's built-in preview tool to export what I'm about to show you today. You can use free tools like GIMP, uh, which works on uh, Windows and Linux, and it's an open source tool. Uh, largely any photo imaging tool is gonna help you do what I'm about to show you today. I'm using Affinity Photo, another great tool, works uh, across all, many, many operating systems. And here it is, so I'm gonna go to File, Export. Now we're not gonna change the size of the file. We're still gonna keep it 3000 by 3000 because if anybody ever pulls this up on an 85 inch, television. I want to make sure it still looks good, um, but we're going to change the quality of it. So we're going to compress the data that's in this file, which has a slight effect on the quality of the image. Um, I think I read an article once that going down to 70% quality is still unrecognizable to the human eye, except for very, very fine detail. So let's just see what that, what that looks like. And you can see right here, it says estimated file size right now at 100% quality is 1.13 megabytes. But if I shrink this down to 70, estimated file size 384.57. So like we just saved a boatload of money on my car insurance. No, <laughs> my file sizes, right? So 70% quality brings it down to 384, which is more than enough to pass the 512 kilobyte challenge. Uh, and we're gonna call this, we are cover, we are here cover our two, save that to the desktop and replace that because I ran a test before. Let's pull it up, we'll right click on it, get the info, move this out of the way. And you can see, yes, 393, so when it rounds up, 459, right, when the file system uh, sees it, so half. I, I definitely cut it down in half and I'm good to go. Does it look any different? Let's pull these up. I know it's gonna be hard for, for many of you to see this because you might be watching this on like a phone or an iPad. I mean, whoops, I could see maybe the slightest hint of difference on this monitor, but very, very difficult to see. Maybe in the details of like this font uh, that, that we chose to use on this W, but very, very difficult to see. Maybe the colors changed ever so slightly, um, but you know, I can barely see a difference uh, in a lot of this stuff if I get really in there against the W. You can see a little bit of compression on this side. You know, very minimal here because this was almost the original file size. So very, very 
there's a little difference, right? When you actually look at it with uh, the human eye. So that's one way of use, of shrinking down your photo size. Use a photo imaging app, export it, bring that compression down or that quality down to from 100% to maybe 70%. Play with it, see what looks best, see what gets, what gets you by. If you say, Matt, I don't have a photo imaging app. I don't even want to open one up. I don't want to spend the time. Oh, don't worry. I've got a solution for you. Go to this website, tinypng.com, and simply drop in your cover art. Boom. You can see right there, one megabyte. It's going to do its thing. It's going to compress it. It's going to do the stuff that we did in our photo app, but it's going to do it out on the cloud, out on those servers, and then we'll give it a moment, let it compress, and then we'll come right back to see when it's done. And we're back. So it tells you right here, Panda just saved you 78%, 811 kilobytes total. The, the new image is now 235.3 kilobytes. And we'll download it and we'll take a look at what that looks like. Here it is right here. Just pulled it up for me automatically on iTunes or on Mac. And you can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, you can see some of the compression points. You can see it's a little soft around those, those major detail areas. But largely, it's great. <laughs> it still looks fine. It's still going to look fine on a phone. And you just saved a ton of disk space. So that's how you compress your images. You can either use a photo app, bring down the quality. Don't bring down the resolution if you don't have to. Um, I always try to shoot for the, the highest maximum, 3,000 by 3,000. And then again, how, how can I compress the images? use a photo app, use the preview app built into Mac. There's a million different apps to use. Or if you don't want an app, tinypng.com is a resource that I've always gone to that I like and I've used before. Thumbs up if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want more stuff around podcasting, content creation. Check out our academy if you want to learn how to become a better podcaster. HTTPS colon slash slash academy dot castos.com. I'll link it up before, below academy.castos.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.